Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. So today, in the time I am recording this, new scripting blocks got added. So the new scripting blocks, I'm just gonna make a new script for this, are fun function. I can type functions test, I'm gonna call it. So if you search on a function, we got new blocks. No, I don't know if you know what functions are, but before this was added, the way you kind of made a function was like a do not run, and then we use execute block. But this method was not really cool. Now we have the functions blocks. Together with the new function blocks to define a function, we also have uh, invoke and receive remote function and bindable functions. So if I search functions, these two instances already were in the game, but never had really a reason to exist because you couldn't do anything with them. But now they have a feature, but I will start with functions. <coughs> so for normal function, the main blocks are define, function return and execute. So, to define a function, we of course need this define function block. Here we can give the function a name. For example, we could just do something like create part. There we can set some parameters. For example, we can set a color. Uh, or then we can add another one. And we can set the uh, end chart, for example. And I'm just gonna use can call curly day. These are two three parameters I'm gonna use. Now to execute this function, so the blocks under this, we need to execute function block. Here we have to write for the function the name that we set here. So in this case it would be create part. Now we have here for the inputs also the parameters that are in the same order as these. So we're gonna add a tree. The first one is color and should and colliday. So the first one should here be a brick color. And then we need two booleans. You can also use variables if you want. Now let's say we want it to be answered, but not coll collision. And we want it to be blue. Well, of course, you can do a lot of different things with these. But it's just a simple example. I'm just going to add a weight before that. And print. So we can see it a little bit better if we later test it. I'm just gonna say here executing function now and I will explain this block in some seconds I'm just gonna put it away for now so for this we're gonna create an object now because we want to create a part with this function you could also maybe set a parent into the parameters I'm just gonna put it to workspace and this will be a new part I'm just gonna call it like that then for the properties that we have, I'm gonna set answered to the parameter name that we set here. So answered is also the parameter. Same goes for can color die. And we have to pick color. Oh, oh no, oh, but I have for this to color parameter. Well, this would create a free one. Part somewhere in the workspace. There it is, it's under the map. So right now it's just creating a part under the map. It's blue, has no collision, but is answered. 
Now, we could also just, uh, for now, so we actually see the block, set the position to a little bit higher. Then I'm just gonna insert a vector tree. It's like, I don't know, 15, 10, 15, so we run now. There's the part. <coughs> now, in this case, we could still use do not want blocks, but now the big cool thing comes. Now, we also have here the returned blues. We can also have their multiple parameters. I'm gonna call this created part. Now, if I print this right now, it would just be nil. Now, the reason it's nil is because we don't use the function return. So after you finished your function, you can set a function return if you want to return something. And in this case, I would return the new part. So if we now run, we get the part as an instance. We can also add multiple parameters depending on what you're doing. Also, if we add wait now here for like one second, uh, one second, and we see now the executing function now, we actually have to wait one second for the part being returned. But the part, if you now watch again, is already there before it returned. So you can also add weights to it with the return for things you maybe want to do. I'm just going to leave it like that. And here you could just do set object property or whatever you want with this. So functions are also pretty useful for like if you have a big script that does at some location is the same thing always again. So you don't need to actually copy the blocks. You can just say one function for everything and return stuff that you need for it maybe and then just call the function everywhere so if i do now a while lo uh, loop we also have new blocks here break loop and continue loop but i'm not going to explain them right now so if i do this now 10 times We can create 10 parts with this one function. We could just put this like, um, technically in this case, we could just say here we connect this with this here. But if you maybe now have the same, exactly same thing somewhere else in the script, you can just say, I also want to create a part here. So now there's already a part because of the separate thing. And now there are 10 more parts. Now the next thing we also have is um, new communication for function with bindable and remote. So I'm just gonna delete these blocks all here. And now if we add a bindable function in this case, we can also add a remote function already. So this will be the bindable, and this will be the remote. Now, when using remote functions, always try to make your code secure so exploiters can't abuse remote functions. Same goes for remote events, but this is not the topic of this video. So if we now search for bindable we got here the bindable event and receive bindable event we don't want these we want to invoke and receive now for this script i'm gonna use receive so if we receive the bindable we can also get parameters again And we actually don't need these blocks too. We just connect it like that. 
and we can do the same properties here again color and shirt and shirt and color the ring. I don't know if, it was, if this was the same order now but this will be the thing I'm doing now and you can keep actually the function return because this actually is now a function basically so if we go now into a different script I'm just gonna put it into the script here and now search for invoke this is basically kind of firing the bindable event you can select the same bindable event give the three parameters so we have the recall I want this maybe and we have the boolean so it was answered and color die I want it to be answered false but can color die true and we also have an output now here and there we get basically due to this function return we return the new part into this script here so if I say now print or I make maybe wait one and then I say set object property part size so vector tree two 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 that's just an example I press uh let's add another weight here so I actually can see or you can see what happens and let's add a print so we can see in the output what actually happens or when it happens just say invoke so when it prints invoke it will invoke the bindable function inside of this script here then this other script here, the function test, will receive the bindable function. We get the parameters, same way like bindable events and remote events basically do. But for this, we can actually with function return new parameters and receive them here again. So if I press one now, we get invoke and now it's scaled to a new size. <clears throat> now for this these bindable functions it's pretty secure since explorers can't access the server you can also use bindable for communicating between local and local but now for remote event we can uh, remote function we can communicate between client to server to client so basically we go from here we send to here and we return to here or we can do it a different way around you can go from server say every client hey do this and return me things that I will receive in the script again so I'm just gonna call this remote function test inside of starter GUI since there we can execute local scripts and if we search now invoke remote function so you can also do client to client communication but just so you know you if you don't want to return something you just reuse remote events because you could well if you want to have a wait maybe to wait until the function is done you can also use an um, invoke but or just sending something to the server or to the client it's not really useful i would say so let's say we invoke this remote, remote function we give it again prick color let's say this time we want yellow for the end shirt, we want false again. No, can't call it. I wait, how was it? I forgot already. Uh, it was end shirt and can call it. I so end shirt false and can call it. I true. And here we can get the part again. 
and let's just set object property apart sides and let's use the different sides for this one let's say five to ten i don't know or five to two to five, ten i don't know let's make another wait so after two seconds the client loaded in it should make a part on the server but we change its size on the client then oh wait i need to play Well, the part is not here, apparently. This is because I forgot to add the receive for the remote function. We can also get a player here if you need to, but I don't need that for me. So we got color, enter it. And can color dry. So you of course need to for a remote event too. And now we should get so this part here is now created on the server, so every player can see this part. But I scaled it on the client after that. So on the server it's still a different sides. But yes, this is basically how these new blocks function. And I hope you understand it. Well, the functions are a really cool thing for, like I already said, for stuff that you do in your script again and again, so you don't need to copy the same blocks over and over again. So, thanks for watching. And... Have a nice day. Bye-bye.